This is the XGME MOGO Pro Portable Projector. It runs Android TV, has Harman Kardon speakers built in, and can project a screen over 100 inches. In this video, I will show you everything it can do. Let's get started. Hey everybody, welcome to Tech with Brett, where I help tech work for you. So XGME reached out to me to see if I wanted to review this. Since it has Android TV, I said yes. So they did provide this product in today's video. So first thing, this is a full 1920 by 1080 p projector. It does say that it supports 4K. That doesn't mean it is 4K, it just can play 4K content. Next we have sound by Harman Kardon. So built in the Mogo Pro is a dual three watt speaker. So that means it's going to have really good sound for movies and music. I also wanna mention there's another model, the XGME Halo, and it has dual five watt speakers. It goes up to 800 lumens and it has a 17,100 milliamp hour battery. But I ended up going with the Mogo Pro as I feel like it's a more universal solution for everybody. So here on the side, you can see that it does have a built in 10,400 milliamp hour battery. So that will allow us to play a full video, which is really nice. Here it has autofocus. That is one of the main things that the other projector I was using didn't have. And then here you have the 100 plus inch screen. So you can expand this, of course, the further away, the less bright it's going to be. And then, like I said, it does run full Android TV. This isn't just Android in a projector, it's Android TV, which gives you a much better interface for your Android device. And then here on the side, because it has Android TV, it has built in Google Assistant with over 4,000 plus native applications, as well as Chromecast built in. So with Chromecast built in, you can easily use your phone to cast items right to the TV without needing any other extra dongles or anything like that. So let's unbox this and see what's inside. So there we have the Mogo Pro. We have a nice user guide. So here it came with a power adapter and charger, and it also came with some extra. So it came with a few different styles of power cables here. So it looks like they're pretty universal standards. Then here we have the remote. I actually really like the look of it. I like that it only has the back and the home button right here. You're gonna use those a lot with Android TV. And then the Google Assistant is up here. Here you have an input button and settings, and then there you have volume, menu, and power. So it looks like you will need to provide your own batteries. There are two AAA batteries that you need, and I'm just really excited about the overall look and feel of this remote. And then over here we have the Mogo Pro. This is much smaller than I actually thought it would be, and it has a really nice size. So up here on the top, you do have the option for volume up and volume down, and a play and pause. Right there on the front, that is where you have the projector coming out. Here is the speaker. On the bottom, you do have a universal mount, so you could mount this right onto a tripod. And then on the back of the device, here you have the power button. You have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, an HDMI cable, a full USB, so you could plug in a flash drive. And then here you have the plug. So let's go ahead and plug this in and get it set up. So I'm going to mount this on a light stand, um, makes it really easy to get it off the ground and pretty secure. But I also recommend getting a little tripod mount like this. This will allow you to angle the projector in any direction so you don't have to tilt the tripod or anything, but here you can just place it on here and then mount the projector on top. Now let's plug it in to power it up. When you plug it in, it is also charging as well so that you can unplug the Mogo Pro and use it wirelessly. To turn it on, we just need to hold down the power button for two seconds or hold it down for five seconds to turn it off. Once the projector is on, put the batteries in your remote and then we're going to pair the remote. And we do this by holding down the back button and the home button for a few seconds until it starts flashing. Now it is in pairing mode and it's going to pair to the Mogo Pro. Once that is complete, we'll then go to the welcome screen of Android TV and go through the setup process. It's very simple to do. You will first choose your language, and then here I have an Android phone, so I'm going to choose continue to set up with my Android phone. Then all I need to do is open the Google Assistant and say set up my device. My phone found the Mogo Pro, so I need to select get started. And now it's going to go through and find the device. Here it's giving us a code to make sure we're setting up the right device. You'll see this on the screen as well. And then we're gonna go through and link our Wi-Fi to the Mogo Pro so that it has access to the internet. Now you do need to have Wi-Fi to be able to use the Android TV features. 
If you're watching something on a flash drive, you can do that without Wi-Fi, but uh, for the most part, you will need to have Wi-Fi to use this. It will then ask which Google account you want to link to the device, type in your password, and then you will head back to the Mogo Pro to finish the setup. So now you will agree to the terms of service, allow for location access, you can choose to help improve Android, and then here you have the option to enable Google Assistant so that you can use your voice to turn on things. And then here you have some information about privacy as well as how to get personal results. So I definitely want to turn that on. And now it's giving me the option to download some applications. Now I have other Android TV boxes, so it's actually showing some of those apps that I already have installed. And then it's showing me a few more that I could install. There are of course way more apps, so I'm just going to choose the ones I want, select next. And now it's going to run us through some of the other things we can do. So here this is powered by Android TV. It does use apps from the Google Play Store. It has Google Assistant built in. And you can use your phone to cast videos right to the Mogo Pro. So here the first notification I'm getting at the top is to do the system update. I'm going to do that before I proceed because I was having a few issues. So if you do get this, make sure you charge it up and do that update. Back to the home screen while that updates. Next thing I'm going to do is go to the settings and then give my device a name. This is the name that's going to show when you try to cast to it from other apps on your phone. So I'm gonna change mine to projector so we know exactly which one this is. Now to input information into your Android TV, you do have the option of the on-screen keyboard. So you can just go around, navigate through the buttons and push okay to select one, which does take some time. So you do have the option to download the Android TV application on your phone, and then you can select the Mogo Pro and use this as a remote. So here I can go right and left. I have the options to go home, back and play and pause here on the bottom. And then I also have the option to change the volume on my phone to change the volume on the Mogo Pro. And here I like this keyboard where I can just swipe anywhere on the screen, but you also have the option to change this in the settings to go to a D-pad so that you can use it however you would like. Now here, if I want to search something on YouTube, I can then pop up the keyboard, type in what I wanna search instead of pecking around with the remote, and it just makes it easier to type something out. Now I can also use Google Assistant right from the Android TV app, so I just press the voice icon, give my request, and then it will search it here on the screen. Now the keyboard from the Android TV app is not supported with every application. So if you're using something like Hulu or Netflix, they have their own keyboards. So you can't use the built-in keyboard on the phone, but you can still swipe and tap to type here. Now that I've shown you how you can control Android TV, let me show you how to navigate it. So here is our Android TV backdrop there in the bottom corner. You can see it says Chromecast built in, you get the time, and then you have these pictures on the background. Now there is no way to customize these with your Google Photos. Right now, Android TV does not support that like a regular Chromecast. So this is what you get. You can adjust certain things in the Google Home application of what is shown up here, but uh, that's pretty much it. So now um, let's go through navigating through Android TV if you haven't. So here I can just press the home key and it will just go to the home screen. So this is our home screen. Here at the top row, we have our favorite applications. So this is totally customizable and we can choose whatever apps we want to be here. Next is a menu called Play Next. So it's gonna look at the different things that you have linked to the Android TV. So here, I recently purchased Sonic the Hedgehog on Google Play Movies, and it's showing here. If I scroll over, it's showing other movies. So I was watching Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, so I could resume it here. Here, I have some other things. So right now, it's just showing Google Play Movies, but I also have linked Vudu, so it's showing that here as well, and other things that I've added to my Plex library, and just some other content there. So now if we scroll down, we have different rows from different applications. So here it's showing a TED app is installed. And so there are a bunch of different TED Talks that I could click on right here. Here it's showing Google Play Movies and TV. And right now it's showing a bunch of different movies that I could rent or buy um, right here. If I wanna change what's showing here, I can just go all the way over to the left. And here I have the option to turn that off. So let's say I don't wanna see Google Play Movies. I can click that button and it goes away. I'll show you how to get it back in a second. Um, if I want to reorganize these, so let's say I want the YouTube Kids app to be up higher, I come over here and then I just press okay on the little arrows. I can move it up here and there you go. The play next is always here and then it goes down to your recommended. So here you can go through and see all the different things that are available. Disney Plus, it's showing some things that I could watch there. 
showing different Plex videos I have. Here it's showing some Hulu. And then down here at the bottom, it shows customized channels. So I can actually come in here and choose what channels are showing. So for the play next, I could turn that off if I want to, or I can come down here and choose what I want it to show. So maybe I don't want it to show Google Play Movies. I can turn that off and then it will just show more recommendations from Disney Plus. Maybe I don't want music on there. You can go through and customize the supported apps there. Then down here, so let's say I do want Google Play Movies, but I don't want it to show top selling. I could come in here and turn that off, or here I can show just the featured videos, or here I can have it show top selling TV shows. And over on the left side of the screen, you can see it's changing of what is available there. So it's really customizable in what you can do, and it's really dependent on if the app supports certain things. So if the app you want is not there, it may just not be supported. So now we're gonna go back up to the top here and let's customize this home row key. So right now, I don't wanna use Google Play Music on here, so I just long press the button and I can select Remove from Favorites. And then let's say I want to add my Movies Anywhere up closer. So I long press, I go to Move, and now I can move this over to the front. And then let's go back here. You have the option to add a favorite. So now it's gonna show all the apps that you have installed on your TV. So let's say we want to add Prime Video as something we wanna watch here. Again, long press, I can move, and then I can move it all the way over here. Um, now, if you want to go and see all of your apps, but you don't want to go through and find some content here, all you have to do is long press on the home button and now it's gonna open your apps list here. So you can do this at any time. If you're in an app or um, anything, you can do this and now go through and navigate all the apps that you have installed and you can select and choose one of those apps. If you want to download more apps, up here at the top you have the choice for get more games or get more apps. So this is going to open the Play Store so that we can go and find more applications to download. And so if you don't find an app here, that's because it is not supported on Android TV in the Google Play Store, or it is not supported on this device. So like right now, Netflix is not supported on the MoGo Pro because Netflix has not certified projectors to use their application. So you just won't be able to find Netflix in here. Um, there are a few other ways to watch Netflix. I'll talk about that in a bit. So here you can go through and find whatever application you want. So let's say we want to download the PBS app. I open it up. Here it's gonna give me some information about it. I can look through screenshots, but I'm just going to select install, and then it's going to install and show up in my apps menu. So right here I could open it. If I ever wanted to come back here and uninstall it, I could do that as well. So let's go back and down here you have featured, you have streamed the movies and TVs you love, you have other recommended videos, free movies and TV. So any application that you can find here, that's the content that you can watch on Android TV. So there are really a ton of different applications that are available. And then you also have different games built right into Android TV that you can download. So you could Bluetooth a controller to this and play these different games. Some games work just with the remote. So one really fun game to play on Android TV is Crossy Roads. It's really easy to do with a remote. Now I could go through here and search for it, but the other option is I can just hold down the Google Assistant button to search for it. Download Crossy Roads from the Play Store. Here's Crossy Roads on the Google Play Store. So there without searching through the menu or anything, it found the application. I can then select install and now I'm ready to play. So let's give it a shot. And all the sound you are hearing is coming from the MoGo Pro. Whew, that was close. Ah, got me. So there you go, that is how you can easily play a game on the MoGo Pro, and that is pretty much all the selection of apps. Again, if I wanna hold down the home button, I can go and see the apps that I have installed. There you can see it downloaded the new PBS app, and then I can select back at any time, and it will go back here to the home screen. Now up at the top, you do have a few options here. You can click the button to use the microphone to search for something. Here you can click to type. Here you could easily change the input, so I can go to 
the HDMI input. Here you can see the battery life, so right now it's plugged in, and that will go down as the battery life is depleted. So when I unplug it, here you can see the screen gets dim, and you can see that it is not charging, and that will go down as you use it. Now, when I did watch a video on here, after about two hours of watching a video, I still had about 30% left of battery, so that's gonna be really good. And you can see that it does dim the screen, so it's going to save battery, and the fan isn't spinning as much just because it's not as bright. So some really cool things when it does go into battery mode, but then when I plug it in, you can see it brightens right back up. And then over here you have settings and you have the time. So now let's talk a little bit more about using Google Assistant with the projector. So on the remote, you do have the Google Assistant button. So I just press the button, play Iron Man 2. And then I can search for whatever I want to without having to use the keyboard or anything. So here, just searching for Iron Man 2. Opening Google Play Movies and TV. It then pulls up where it's available. So I own this movie on Google Play Movies and TV. And now it's going to go right into playing the movie. Let's fast forward a bit here. Sam can kick back on a lawn chair, sipping on an iced tea, because I haven't come across anyone who's mad. There you can see the volume controls over on the side. And we can push back. Now let's say I want to watch a movie that I don't own. Watch Trolls World Tour. So here it pulled up a few different options. It then asked me for a response, so I could just watch the trailer. I could go get it on Google Play Movies and TV, or it says it's available on Vudu, so then I could go to Vudu. So this is really nice to be able to find videos you wanna watch without having to search through a bunch of different applications. And there you can see it gives you a few other details. So one other thing that I like to use voice commands for is not using a remote. I like to use my Google Assistant in the room to be able to do that. So let's try that out. So here you can see my Nest Hub at the bottom of the screen, and I did change the name of the projector to Mogo Pro. Play Tech with Brett from YouTube on Projector. Sorry, I can only play videos on devices using Chromecast or on Cast-enabled TVs. So as you can see, that just does not work. Now it's very interesting because even though none of those voice commands work for my Google Home, I can say, turn off the projector. Okay, turning off the projector. And that works every time for some reason. Turn on the projector. Okay, turning the projector on. But turning on the projector does not work. You do need to use the remote, but I was able to turn on the projector using CEC. So if I plugged in a Chromecast device or even using my Harmony Hub, it was able to send a command to turn on the projector. Now, even though the voice commands from my Google Home device didn't work, this does have Chromecast built in. So that allows you to go to any cast supported application and then quickly send a video to the Mogo Pro without using your remote to find it. So here in the Google Play Movies and TV application, let's say I want to cast, I just select the cast icon. Here I choose the projector. So here I just choose whatever video I want to play and then it will begin playing on the projector. Here, if I wanna go into YouTube, I can then select the cast button, choose the projector. It will then cast that video to the projector. So all of that works really well. The main issue you're gonna have is Netflix. Again, we'll get to that in just a minute. Now, the last way to cast content to your Mogo Pro is using the cast screen on Android devices. So if you have an Android phone, you're able to mirror your screen to the projector by going into the Google Home application, here I can select cast screen, and now it is showing my phone screen here on the projector. So whatever I'm doing on my phone, you will be able to see up on the TV. So maybe there's something that you wanna show on the big screen without using an app that supports casting. This is a great way to be able to do that, and this worked just fine. Now when casting like this, there is a slight delay, but here you can see as I scroll through the menu, it's very small. So if you are watching a movie or something, you might have some type of delay or playing a game. That won't work great, but just by showing certain things on the screen, uh, it's gonna work really well. Now let's take a look at some of the specific features for the Mogo Pro. Let's start by looking at the remote. So I really like the XGME Mogo Pro remote. This is one of the best Android TV remotes I've seen. So up here at the top, you have the power button. Here you have a menu button. Here you have Google Assistant, and then you have the input, and then you can go right into the settings. This will help you quickly adjust the brightness as well as the sound. Here you have navigation, so you have up, down, left, right, and then the OK button there in the middle. 
Here you have the back and the home button and then the volume button. And on the bottom here, you have the switch from volume to focus. So if you need to focus at any time, switch to focus, and then you can use the volume controls to do the focus. So very simple. And I really like how there's no other promotional button. So other Android TV remotes, you'll find even my JBL link bar. There's some buttons down here at the bottom that allow you to open up certain applications, which I never push those. So it's nice to have a really clean remote, only the buttons that I really need, volume right here, back home, and then the controls. And then if I ever need Google Assistant, which I don't use Google Assistant a ton on the TV, but there it is if I need it. And then you have all the other controls right there. So great job, XGMe on the remote. Now let's take a look at the projector screen. So one of the unique features was its autofocus. So if you ever reorient the position of the Mogo Pro, it will automatically adjust. And that worked really well. Anytime I need to reorient it, it automatically focuses and looks very crisp. Now it does say that the screen can be up to 100 inches, but here I actually have it at 137 inches. You can see just how crisp and clear it was. Now this is a 1080p screen, but it looked super nice from really up close. You could see that there was some really good definition here and the focus was spot on, no issues with that. Now let me show you some of the other settings you have, and I'm just gonna press the settings on the remote. So here I can clear the apps in the background so that everything's running smooth. I have 3D video setup. So if you're watching a 3D supported video, you could do that here. I have image settings, so I could change it to bright. I like the standard option here. You have soft, you have office, there's even a game mode, and then you have customized. So I could come in here and break it down to the exact settings that I want for the projector. So you have all of those there. Then you have sound output. So right now it's set to the internal um, speakers or I could switch to the auxiliary if I have a speaker plugged in over auxiliary. And then the last option here is to go to keystone correction. So with keystone correction, you can completely adjust the way the projector is oriented without changing the orientation of the projector. So is what I mean is I can come in here to side projection mode and then I can change the manual four points for the keystone. So I can manually make it so that this is all the way flat on the wall. So here you can see I can adjust this corner. If I push OK, I can adjust this corner down. So let me make this perfectly flat on my wall and I could bring it in, push OK, bring this up and in. And so you can get this exactly the way that you want it. That looks pretty good. So then I can just select back and there we go. And then you also have the option to zoom in and out. So let's say I want to zoom in a little bit higher on the screen. You can do that or you could zoom out to get it the perfect orientation that you want. Now there are a few more settings, but we're gonna click the settings and go all the way to the bottom in all settings and then go to projector settings. So here I can choose the brightness controls, I have the keystone correction, I have projector placement. So let's say I wanna orient it from the rear or I want to do the rear ceiling or I want to do the front ceiling. So you can orient that in those four different positions, which is really nice. So you can place projector pretty much anywhere. And then you have focus settings. So here you could change it from open focus to close focus. And then here you have CEC settings. So when I have my Chromecast in here, if the CEC is on, it's automatically going to turn on the projector or turn off the projector with the device that is attached. And then lastly, you have gyroscope calibration. So if when you change the orientation, it's not working, you can come in here and calibrate it. So here are all just the specific projector settings. There are a ton of other settings for Android TV, but I think it's really nice that you have all of these options available. Now, one of the other things is the quality of the screen. So here you can see just how bright and vibrant the screen can get. Everything looked really nice and you do have controls where you can adjust the brightness and change the type of tone that you have so you can have a more natural tone or different types of colors. Now my wall is slightly gray, so if I did have a pure white wall or if I did buy a projector screen, I can see that would improve some of the brightness as well, um, but I just didn't wanna go out and change my wall or get a projector screen. This worked really well. As for brightness, the Mogo Pro performed really well as long as your room was able to get really dark. The sun is not the Mogo Pro friend. So here, if we were trying to watch a video during the day, it just didn't perform well. The sun is coming in from three different windows here, so it just doesn't work great. Now, when I did reorient the Mogo Pro here to be facing away from the sun, it did look a little bit better during the day, but as long as you are able to close off all the windows and it is pretty dark outside, you should have a pretty good experience. 
Now let's have a listen to the dual 3 watt speaker built into the Mogo Pro. For just everyday listening and watching videos, I think this is going to work pretty well. Let's have a listen. <laughs> Well, the kids definitely thought it could get a bit too loud. So overall, really good speaker. Now I do like that there are other options if you want to enhance the sound. So on the back, you have the 3.5 millimeter jack where you can just plug in a speaker that has an auxiliary port, or you also have the option to pair a Bluetooth speaker right in the settings. <laughs> Now to make this a truly portable projector, you will need to use the USB port on the back because if you don't have internet, you won't be able to watch anything through the Android TV apps because they need to stream. But if you put content on the USB port, plug it in, it will then pop up this menu where you can view the different files that you have on your flash drive. So here I found an old flash drive, plugged it in, popped right up. Here I have a picture that you could view on here or I have Guardians of the Galaxy. So I then just need to select the video player and then it's going to play that movie. I don't need any internet and the sound is going to come out of the speaker that I have and I can use it on battery. So a true portable projector. Now, one of the main issues I saw with the Mogo Pro in the reviews is that it does not have Netflix support. Let's talk about that. So you will notice that in the applications here, I do have Netflix installed. So if I open it up, it says Netflix app is not compatible with your device. So XGMe does have an option to be able to install Netflix to use here on the Mogo Pro. So we're going to need to download the XTV Manager application, open this up, and then we're gonna to go to Netflix and install that so that we can access Netflix on the Mogo Pro. And then it's going to ask if you allow XTV Manager to install applications. So we're gonna turn that on select back and then down here we just need to select install so what this is doing is downloading a separate version of netflix and putting it on the mogo pro since this is android it is able to do that so now we can open that up and here we have access to the phone version of netflix so let's just not update and try it out so here it's actually giving me a mouse on the screen works pretty good so it is a little bit interesting navigating through this. I need to go to the edge of the screen to go down, um, but let's just go ahead, select the movie, see if it works. So this is not formatted for a TV, so that's why it's a little different. And there you go, you can watch Netflix. Now I think there is a better way to do this. Let me show you what I would recommend. So to fix the issue with being able to cast by voice and being able to use Netflix, I would recommend picking up a Chromecast. So you can get a Chromecast for $35. This is the Chromecast second generation. They now have the third generation. Um, you plug this in, you then have access to all of the voice commands. You can use Netflix all by voice with your Google Home devices. So you just plug that in and get it set up to do that. You could also pick up a Chromecast Ultra. Now you really wouldn't need to do that because the Mogo Pro doesn't support 4K. But if you wanted to play something like Google Stadia, I say that would be a good way to go as well. Or if you already in the Amazon family, you could pick up a Fire TV or a Fire TV stick to be able to do that. I also have a video how you could turn one of these and a projector into a full home theater system and that's awesome to do. So even though the Mogo Pro speaker is nice, it's great to have a projector with a great sound system. And I would say the best way to do that is going to be with two Echo devices and some speakers and a Fire TV. So that is another way to do that. So you just plug these in, head to the input, and then you have all those features available. Now that I have my Chromecast plugged in, I can go up here to inputs, or I can just press the input button. There's the HDMI, I'm going to select that and now it goes to that Chromecast. So here, this is a normal Chromecast, so I have all the other Chromecast options. So I can say, play Tech with Brett from YouTube on Chromecast Ultra. Sure, playing Tech with Brett from YouTube on Chromecast Ultra. Just like I'm used to, it's gonna pop up there. And then I have all the volume controls right here on my remote as well. Now, even though we don't have a remote to browse around, we still have access to all 
of the features of the Chromecast through the Mogo Pro, which just makes it really nice to have if you are thinking of getting the Mogo Pro. Now this also fixes the Netflix issue because Netflix is supported on the Chromecast. We can now cast to the Chromecast no problem. Play Angry Birds 2 from Netflix on Chromecast Ultra. All right, the Angry Birds movie 2 from Netflix, playing on Chromecast Ultra. And there you can see, works great, super crisp and clear, and we have all the videos that we like to watch. And also with a Chromecast built in, we now have the option to turn it off fully by voice. Turn off Chromecast Ultra. So that fully turned off our MoGo Pro. Let's try and turn it back on. Turn on the Chromecast Ultra. And boom, there it is. Now, even though it didn't go to the Chromecast Ultra screen, we can then just easily go to the input. And now we are at our Chromecast Ultra. Now let's also check out what gaming looks like through the input. So I didn't plug in my switch or anything. You could do that. But here, let's try out Stadia with the Ultra. That seems to work pretty well and looks really good. So we've been using the Mogo Pro for the last few weeks and I'm actually very impressed. Now I will say it was a little bit of a rocky start. So if you do get this, make sure you plug it in and go through the Android update that is available. Without that update, I was having a few issues where it wouldn't connect to Bluetooth and I couldn't plug in something with HDMI and hear the sound. It would show the video, but no sound. And so after that update was complete, pretty much everything was able to work just fine. And I'm very impressed with the product. So the picture looks great. The very first thing I noticed as soon as it went onto the wall is how clear and sharp it was compared to the previous projector I was using. The autofocus in this is just amazing. If there's some object in the way, it may cause it not to autofocus great, but I love that on the remote, you have that option to just flip the switch and you can change the focus so easy. Now, as for a functional Android TV device, it almost does everything that other Android TV devices would use. So I've talked about a lot of Android TV devices here. The main things that this cannot do versus other Android TV devices is one, it can't play Netflix out of the box and you can't cast Netflix to it. Now I talked about how you can just plug in a Chromecast, highly recommend that. So that's one thing it can't do. Um, the second issue that I had with like Android functionality is it won't do any voice commands. So I can't ask it to play certain things from my Google Home to this. Um, so that's a bit of a bummer, but I'm very happy that it does let me turn off the device with voice, which is really nice. Um, the third weird thing was that Google Play Movies and TV, while they would play on here, for whatever reason, it doesn't support the HDR codec or something like that. So in watching movies from Google Play Movies and TV, they were dim. They were like 50% as bright as other applications that were playing movies, where most of my movies collection is in the Google Play Movies app. But again, to fix that, all you need to do is get a Chromecast, plug it in, switch to the input, and then you're good to go. And that fixes the voice command functions as well. Now let's talk about it as a projector. So the projector screen is able to get huge. Even though it says up to 100 inches in my room that we were using this at home, I was able to pull it very far back and it was able to get really big and it still looked very crisp and clear. Now in here, you can see that I do have it pretty dark back here and you can see it on the wall and it works great. I did find that if you have the sun um, behind the projector, so let's say the sun was back here and I tried to block it off, I wasn't able to block it off very good. In the family room that we're using to watch movies on here, we just couldn't watch them during the day. If the sun was out, um, even though I tried to close it off, it still wasn't a very good experience. But if I was able to put it on an opposite wall where the sun wasn't shining, I had a much better experience during the day. So I wouldn't recommend this. If it's gonna be like your main daytime TV, it's not gonna work great unless you have a way to close off all the sun. Um, and if you do, then you're gonna have a good experience. Now let's talk about the speaker on the MoGo Pro. So when you watch a video on a projector, you usually want some pretty good sound. So with the MoGo Pro, 
I was pretty happy with the sound. If I just ever wanted to hear something watching a YouTube video, I thought it sounded great. Now this speaker, even though it's a three watt speaker, it's not gonna be anything that fills the entire room or has really deep bass. For that, that's why they added a auxiliary port on the back. So you can plug in any speaker that you have that has auxiliary port and play it through that speaker. Most of the time, when we're watching something on this, it's gonna be our home theater night or whatever, and so we're gonna use the projector with a really good sound system to complete that. But if you were to take this on the go, I'd say that this speaker is actually gonna do a pretty good job. Um, it's going to be loud enough so that everyone can hear what's going on, but it won't fill an entire room um, or a big space that would be needed. So um, maybe always have an extra portable speaker or even a Bluetooth speaker. So you could use the auxiliary port here, or you can pair a Bluetooth speaker with it. And I didn't hear any delay when I used it with a Bluetooth speaker at all. It sounded really good. So um, pretty good speaker built in here on the Pro. HDMI port, it was able to play everything that I plugged into it. So you can plug in a Chromecast, Chromecast Ultra, Fire TV. If you have a game console you want to play on here, you would be able to plug that in no problem. So it's great that it has that. So next, let's move on to the USB port. So one of the interesting things about the Mogo Pro being a portable projector with Android TV is Android TV is not a portable OS. So on your phone, if you have an Android phone, you can go into many of the applications, into Netflix or um, other apps, Google Play Movies, and there's an option to download those movies to your device so that if you don't have the internet, you can watch them. Well, with Android TV on the Mogo Pro, you don't have that option. I went through every application. I went through YouTube, uh, Disney+, Plus, Vudu, all of those apps, and there's no way where you can actually download content from the apps to the Mogo Pro. It does have a 16 gig internal storage, so it would be able to hold a few movies so that if you take this summer, you can play those. But sadly, that option is not available. So what do you do to fix that? Well, that's where the USB port comes in. So if you have your own movies stored as a file, you can load them onto the USB port, plug it in, and then it has a file browser where you can just browse to that video and play and watch the video without an internet connection. So every other app that you use on here requires an internet connection. So let's say you're going on a trip in the middle of nowhere and you wanna use this to watch a movie, you would need to have a good internet connection there or you would need to have a good hotspot that has plenty of room so that you could stream a movie from the Android TV device. But to make it fully portable, you're not always gonna have that. So you can use the USB port to load a movie on there, plug it in, and then watch it. And that would give you the full portable experience. So it's really nice that it does have that USB port on here. I just wish that Android TV did have the option to download um, uh, movies from a few of those applications that I use so that I didn't always need to use the USB port. So that's not XGMe's fault. That's something that Android needs to improve over time. And then lastly here, we have the power cable. So again, this does have a 10,400 milliamp battery. So you can unplug it. Here it's going to stay on battery until it runs out. Um, I had no problem watching Ratatouille on here without it running out. I think I still had 30% more battery left. So as you can see, it dimmed the screen. So it went into a bit of a power saving mode. And so it's gonna last a good amount of time. And if you're ever around a plug, you can just plug it in and you have a more bright screen and it's just going to be a better experience. Now, one other thing that I wanna talk about here on the back is you have the air vents. So compared to this other projector that I was using before, this is extremely quiet. So here, let me do a sound comparison between this old projector and the Mogo Pro. Fast forward to today and many game consoles later, we are at a place where we never imagined gaming could go. Or... 
So as you could hear, even while I'm talking, I've had this on the whole time and it's not interrupting me talking. Sometimes if the fan is too loud, you need to increase the volume more just to drown out the um, sound of the fan, but that has not been a problem here with the Mogo Pro. One really important part of any Android TV device is the remote. And this remote is one of the best that I have ever used. This has all the controls in the right places and everything worked great. Now there is a tiny bit of lag sometimes to wake up the remote. Maybe if you wanna change the volume, right there it worked just fine, but sometimes you may need to wait just a second um, before you can start interacting with certain things or navigating through the menu. But for the most part, this worked really good. So this has all the buttons in the right places and it just worked really well. And so this is the first portable projector with the full Android TV experience. There are a ton of other projectors out there, but they have a modified version of Android, not the TV experience. So I highly recommend getting this over those. Now I do like everything about this. There are a few things that could be improved, but those are pretty much solved if you just add a Chromecast to the device and then everything's gonna work great for you. So if you have any further questions about the Mogo Pro, please let me know in the comments below and XGMe is actually going to be giving you guys a discount. So I'll leave a discount code and all the details to picking up one of these in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.